Welcome to Adventures with a Very Small Lathe. This is the plastic stand that came with a set of watchmaker screwdrivers I bought recently. There's a lot wrong with it. There are two different size holes, but the number of each size doesn't match the number of the two sizes of screwdriver in the set. The rotating top turns way out of true and grates against the bottom half. Taking it apart reveals that the central screw is basically wedged into a thin steel plate in the bottom, using a thread so badly cut it can only just engage. I was sure I could make something better in the shop in a couple of hours. I did, but it took a while longer. My basic plan was to replicate the rough form using two pieces of aluminium and a cheap 608ZZ skate bearing. I used 63mm round bar stock because it's about the same diameter as the original stand. To reduce the number of passes on the lathe, I set the compound straight to the slope angle I wanted on the top of the stand without bothering to face off the stock first. Once the slope face was deep enough, I could face off the level area in the middle much more easily. I flipped the part around and faced it flat on the underside. I wanted to machine a pocket for the bearing, so I started by drilling it out as large as I reasonably could using the Proxon's very small tailstock.
I then used a boring bar to remove the rest of the material. Without a carriage stop, I depended on the index control wheel to bore to the right depth. Once I had created enough room, I switched to a larger boring bar for the extra stiffness. I reduced the depth by half a millimetre to create a shelf for the outer part of the bearing to rest against, ensuring the inner part had clearance to turn. The outer diameter of the bearing is 22mm and all the information I could find online suggested turning the pocket to exactly this dimension for a snug fit. I needed to turn down the lower part to the right dimension for the inner diameter of the bearing. It would probably have been way quicker to drill it and fit a pin of the correct diameter, but I didn't think of that until later.
Once I had enough length, I left a small shelf for the bearing centre and turned a clearance of 0.2mm for the rest of the surface. I then brought the centre to dimension for the inner bearing diameter of 8mm. I brought the shelf diameter down to the right size and turned a reference surface on the available outer diameter. I needed to recenter the part very closely to try and make the outer surface finish look good and the step between the two turning operations as invisible as possible. The finish I got is pretty nice and I'm happy with it. At this point the project has taken all my shop time for three complete weeks so my initial time estimate wasn't that great and I hadn't even started working out how to drill all the holes. Watch the next episode to find out how many different ways I screwed that up before finding a setup that worked.